What can we learn by studying the DNA of a woman who lived 3,800 years ago? About 3,800 years ago, a woman living in what is now Hokkaido, Japan, was buried in a shell mound. About three millennia passed before researchers discovered her remains in 1998, and among those remains were teeth and a skull. Joman woman got her name because she lived during the Joman period, kind of like the Neolithic age of Japan, which lasted from 10,500 BC to about 300 BC, so like a super long period. And to learn more about her, they took one of her molars and extracted DNA from it and looked at her genes and to see what kind of variant she had. The resulting genetic analysis revealed all kinds of secrets about Joman woman. She had moderately dark skin and hair and eyes, and her hair was kind of frizzy, and she actually had an elevated chance of developing freckles. She was also at an increased risk of developing solar latigo, which are darkened patches on your skin that you might get if you're in the sun too much, getting too many UV rays. Curiously, this woman also had something very much in common with people who live in the Arctic. It turns out she has this gene variant that helps her metabolize a high-fat diet, and basically no one on Earth has this genetic variant except people in the Arctic where like 70% of them have it. And this actually makes sense because from what we know about people in her culture, they were eating lots of high-fat animals both on land and in sea. So on land they were eating wild boar and deer, and in the ocean they were hunting fur seals, sea lions, dolphins, salmon, and trout. Joman woman's DNA also tells us a lot about the genetic ancestry of her whole people. So for instance, this genetic analysis shows that her people most likely split from the continental East Asians from between 38,000 years ago and 18,000 years ago, and also that they were pretty isolated and lived in small hunter-gatherer groups. That said, even though she doesn't have too much in common with uh, modern-day Japanese people, for instance, she has a really high tolerance for alcohol, which some Japanese people have trouble handling today. It turns out that she's more closely related to today's Japanese, Korean, Taiwanese, and Filipino people than the Han Chinese people are. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and on top of that, she had another genetic difference. She had wet earwax, which is very rarely seen in Japanese people today. 